how epic is this finale? Hanger Chiefs at the ready, who fans? <laughs> Army of Ghosts and Doomsday by Russell T. Davis, as of course the epic two part series finale of Sue. Series 2 of Doctor Who. Now, uh, Army of Ghosts and Doomsday tells the story of the Doctor and Rose finally paying uh, Rose's mother, Jackie, a visit in present day. However, uh, the Torchwood Institute has been uh, uh, doing this new program called The Ghost Ship, where they allow uh, ghosts to come uh, uh, through uh, the void, which is the portal between uh, this universe and the parallel universe, and they're keeping the mysterious void ship, which uh, open the void in the first place however all is not as it seems as the ghosts turn out to be an invasion of cybermen from the parallel earth and the void ship is of course the ship of uh the four greatest daleks in existence the cult of scarrow carrying the mysterious genesis arc it's the ultimate battle daleks versus cybermen and of course the devastating departure of rose tyler <laughs> Now this is considered one of the show's greatest finales and is considered one of the greatest uh, episodes of, and stories since the show's revival as well. Uh, people have even hailed the uh, Bad Wolf Bay scene as the greatest scene in sci-fi history. Uh, now, and I gladly agree, this is not just by far my favourite story of Series 2. Not only did it end Series 2 absolutely perfectly, uh, but it is one of my favourite uh, Doctor Who stories just ever, and that includes the classic series. Pretty darn awesome, right? While uh, some may consider Army of Ghosts and Doomsday two separate stories, I see them both as just one story uh, in two episodes, uh, because that's essentially what it is. I know I keep saying this in my two parts. Uh, reviews but uh, Army of Ghosts is the definition of the setup and Doomsday is the perfect payoff uh, and this uh, two-part finale is no exception I mean I loved uh, that the Doctor and Rose uh, paid Jackie a visit so we haven't seen uh, Jackie since uh, the beginning of New Earth so it's wonderful uh, uh, to get in touch with Rose's family again and the uh, concept of the ghosts and the setup is brilliant. It's so intriguing. It leaves us wondering uh, what are the ghosts? Uh, what purpose uh, have they come here for? And and it's great uh, that uh, we finally get to see Torchwood in action, as uh, hinted in Tooth and Claw when Queen Victoria set up Torchwood. Uh, we now get to see it in its uh, full glory, and it is brilliant. It's uh, wonderfully designed and. I love Yvonne Hartnell, she's a great character, she's uh, such a uh, uh, badass woman and uh, we get a great moment with her and the Doctor rivaling about whether they should cancel the ghost ships or not, so, uh, yeah, and uh, she even gets a great character arc where uh, she realises she's allowed the Cybermen to come into uh, the world in Doomsday and, and she gets upgraded and turned into a Cyberman herself but in the end she uh, still keeps some of her emotions and uh, helps the Doctor and Rose uh, save the day. And uh, Jackie actually has a point being in this episode, we don't just see her in the beginning and never see her again, she actually comes on the adventure which is awesome and which is appropriate considering this was at the time Rose's last adventure with the Doctor so it's important to have her entire family there, not only that, but Mickey also returns, wonderful to see him again and him and Rose really uh, rekindle their romance and uh, it's, we even see uh, the parallel piece again, uh, again uh, from Rise of Simon and the Age of Steel uh, that uh, brilliantly connects uh, both two passes together and uh, now that uh, Rose has uh, her entire family back, uh, Jackie, Pete and Mickey, uh, it's her uh, character art for series 2 uh, really comes full circle. 
because Army of Ghosts is uh, pretty much the setup, you'd think it would be boring, but it's not far from it. There's still in, uh, such uh, a great mystery to it uh, about the ghost, but not only that, uh, we see Freema a demon for the first time, who of course will play Martha Jones, the next companion in Series 3, and uh, she uh, gets uh, uh, upgraded by the Cybermen and when she discovers their upgrading chamber, and when the Cybermen do reveal themselves, oh it's epic, the cliffhanger of Army of Ghosts is absolutely phenomenal, it is still one of Doctor Who's greatest cliffhangers, uh, when the five million Cybermen just invade the entire planet, and and uh, it's all out war, and uh, even better, the sphere opens in what we think it's going to be Cybermen, but it turns out to be uh, the greatest threat of them all, the Daleks. Oh my god, that was uh, the longest wait for the next episode at the time I ever had. I couldn't fucking wait. Uh, that you couldn't ask for a better cliffhanger. But Doomsday is uh, not just as good as Army Ghosts in every way, it's ten times better. Doomsday is uh, the uh, main focus of the two parts uh, very appropriately, and uh, it uh, opens with Rosa doing the most badass thing ever. She actually stands up to the Daleks and uh, identifies them and convinces them to keep them alive. Um, I don't know any other companion that would do that. Uh, yeah, Rose was definitely the bravest with the Daleks. And, and the war between the Daleks and the Cybermen, uh, as Russell T. Davis promised, uh, does not disappoint whatsoever. It is the uh, only time that we see the Daleks and the Cybermen actually fight, and uh, it's just uh, brilliant seeing the Daleks being uh, fucking badasses and just a nut four Daleks annihilating all these five million Cybermen. So it goes to show numbers don't matter at all. Uh, although uh, uh, when the Daleks uh, plan to open the uh, Genesis Arch to unleash millions of Daleks that were trapped by the Time Lords, why would the Daleks need that army? I mean, just four Daleks is enough to... Uh, overpower the Cybermen and uh, uh, conquer the universe. But these Daleks are not just any old Daleks, they are the last four Daleks in existence at the time. The Cult of Skara, a secret order that rang above even the Emperor himself, as the Doctor said, a Dalek Sec, Dalek Fey, Dalek Just and Dalek Khan. These guys are a truly mean business, and Dalek Sec looks so uh, distinct uh, among the other Daleks being black. Uh, we've never seen a black Dalek before, and uh, it's great that they gave them names to uh, make them really stand out from just uh, the regular Daleks. And, and Rose uh, uh, is uh, trapped in them with Mickey in the spear chamber for most of the episode, and it's uh, brutal when they have to watch uh, the uh, scientist guy uh, get his brain sucked out by the cult of Scaro. And uh, Rosa, uh, she full on stands up to them the entire time. She's like, you didn't need to kill him. And she even says the most ballsiest thing to a Dalek ever. She actually says uh, she destroyed the Emperor, to which this pisses uh, Sek off. And he almost exterminates her until, thankfully, the Doctor comes to her rest. Although I will admit, well, as cool as it is seeing the Daleks and the Cybermen just kick the shit out of each other, uh, it is cool to see for a while, but it does get a little boring seeing the Cybermen have literally no chance against the Daleks, uh, and seeing how invincible these Daleks are all the time. I mean, can uh, the Daleks face a challenge as well? Because none of the Cult of Scaro die in this episode, uh, they all survive uh, to uh, the uh, two part uh, series three story Daleks of Manhattan and Evolution of the Daleks, but that works. Uh, it was that was a great conclusion to uh, uh, their story arc, which I'll talk about in my series three reviews. And uh, it's great seeing uh, Pete and Jake uh, return from the parallel world. Uh, they uh, get to kick some major ass. And it's such an emotional moment when uh, Pete and Jackie meet again. Uh, uh, Jackie has finally come face to face with the man she loved who she thought was dead all this time and uh, to come home with him to another universe with uh, an alternative version of the man she loved must be been a miracle for her. And what I love about the ending of this episode is that it's not too easily resolved although they do uh, 
uh, successfully suck the Daleks and the Cybermen into the void, there are some great consequences that uh, come with it. So, first of all, uh, uh, it's uh, happy that uh, Jackie, Pete, and Mickey get to live a new life on the parallel, but Rose, uh, she's not having any of it. She's made her choice. She will never leave the Doctor, even for her own mother, which goes to show she's the only companion that truly loves him if she's willing to make that sacrifice and the moment when she helps the doctor open the void and they hang on to those magnets but uh, she sadly has to let go to open the void again um, and sadly gets uh, sucked in as much as she tries to hold on and luckily Pete saves her just in time uh, and when she's trapped behind uh, the wall and the bridge is closed it's such a beautifully shot scene when Rose is uh, crying to the wall and the doctor's just listening. They they have no idea. They're listening to each other and gosh, the feels, man. I mean, and Billy Piper and David Tennant in that moment are both top freaking notch. They are both truly phenomenal in the final moments of this episode. And Billy Piper gives, uh, gives all out. She cries her heart out at at the Bad Wolf Bay scene. That is the best scene in the entire episode. Uh, so beautifully shot, so much emotion, so much power. I'm, it's, some people say the moment where Rose says I love you comes off as corny, but I do not understand why. I think that's a beautiful moment, and uh, the romance between the Doctor and Rose is genuinely earned because they've spent two series together, so if they'd only spent one series together, it wouldn't have come across as strong, uh, that scene. And the uh, uh, pass, uh, the cliffhanger where Donna appears in the TARDIS and she's like, what the hell is this place? And the Doctor's like, what? I know some people may find that creates tonal whiplash, but I found that hilarious as hell. And that got me uh, pumped as hell to see the Christmas special, The Runaway Bride, which I'll review very soon, and was the first series finale I ever saw, and boy was I glad I did. It is that nostalgic to me, and for, at the time, for a long time as a kid, it was my absolute favourite episode and story of Doctor Who in general, not just series two, and today uh, that has not changed. I still uh, watch this episode again and again. It's a uh, truly feels like an epic finale in every way. So much happens. Uh, it's an all-out war. The stakes have never been higher. There's genuine loss and and a truly uh, heartbreaking end. And uh, it's an all-around masterpiece. Russell T. Davis, you're the man. You have proven that uh, you are truly the greatest writer on Doctor Who. And one uh, quick thing I'd like to mention, this uh, uh, finale is a, a little unique and different from the other three Russell C. Davis series finales. It's the only one not to feature Captain Jack Harkness. Uh, I'm surprised not many people have pointed that out. Oh yeah, Doomsday is brilliant. It's perfect. Uh, uh, any flaws I say are just minor nitpicks, but do not uh, detract from my overall enjoyment of this and love of this episode. It's a true classic. It ended series two perfectly. It uh, has the uh, greatest companion send-off ever and it uh, is a uh, best story of series two absolutely. I give Army of Ghosts and Doomsday five stars out of five. Agstabernate Delete. Well I love you guys. Thank you all for watching and we finally reviewed all of series two and uh, stay in tuned next time for my review of the Christmas special, The Runaway Bride, and what do you think of Army of Ghosts and Doomsday? Please comment, let me know, please like the video, and subscribe, please follow me on Twitter and on Google+, and I'll see you all next time, bye guys.